first thing you want to do when you're installing this is make sure you have all your gaskets ready. So then we'll just put these into the spacer and then we'll get it installed. Alright guys, finally, after two ridiculous days of work, not getting any spare moments, we are finally going to install the manifold spacer. So, the first thing you're going to want to do, technically, is disconnect your battery. After that, you're going to want to drain your coolant because you're going to have to disconnect that upper radiator hose, that lower radiator hose, and that upper radiator hose. So, I'm going to drain my coolant, and then uh, I'll be right back. Alright. I'm not draining my coolant the conventional way, but the, uh, the way you do it is way down there, past everything. Actually, let me get under it. Oh, maybe it's on the side, I think. Somewhere up there, there might be a uh, pitcock somewhere. There it is, right there. Use that, 19 millimeter, turn it, be gentle, and then let it drain from there. But, because I'm at my shop and I have a drainy thingy that separates out cool and stuff, I'm gonna do it the, uh, the lazy way. So the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna disconnect however you can. In a stock one, you'll uh, probably have to disconnect it back there using a, uh, I think it's a seven or eight millimeter, but I've got my own spot pipe. So just loosen those up about there and there usually work. Pull it apart. Yeah, I don't have barbed ends, but I don't care. I'm not worried about it breaking. Yes, that's silicone because oil leaks out of there. Disconnect your reference pipe thing. Uh, next thing, since I have direct port myth, you gotta disconnect that jobber. I'm just gonna leave that because it's not a big deal. Disconnect your map sensor. Those are for the boost blow up valve and the reference for the the methanol, disconnect that, disconnect this, basically get clearance for everything, you'll be able to get those two bolts, I'd recommend leaving these two heater lines attached since you can just kind of flop the intake manifold out of the way. Um, but we're definitely going to have to do that one. Uh, brake booster. Uh, there we go. PCV. Just pull up on the tab. It'll come right out, just like it's not doing for me. Uh, there we go. Purge valve line, and you wanna pull that off. The manifold so it kind of comes out of the way. Uh, I'm gonna have to undo that. So get that off real quick. Basically just disconnect everything from the intake manifold 
that's on top. Put your boost control solenoid off to the side. Uh, and then we're going to work on the noisemaker delete. Got the charger attached. Oh, mine's on this side. That's right, I made it easy. I'm sorry about this camera work, guys. I'm by myself. Trying to do everything one handed. So I'll give you four. One. Uh. Actually, you got this one tight. Don't drop that screw. Be good. Gather your screws so you don't drop anymore. Mm -hmm. And throttle body. Pull up on the noise maker delete. Body screw that right there, and then you have plenty of access for that hose clamp right there. So that is what we are going to work on next. And let me go get some pliers. I'll be right back. All right, we're back with the pliers. So we're gonna go in there. Actually, since I didn't drain my coolant, I did it the easy way. Take off the radiator cap so there's no pressure. Should do that anyway. And just pull that to the side. Out oh, there is good. And do the same thing with this one. Get your wires out of the way. Ow, ow, ow. Oh my god, the front of the car is in the sun and shit is hot. All right. Mm -hmm. Yummy, delicious. And then we'll uh, work on that. Yes, I know I need to get a new upper radiator hose. Okay. Perfect example. So, nifty thing about these pliers is they go to a big size. Clothes like that. And you can actually just grip the hose, 
twist it. And once you break the seal, coolant will go all around and kind of lube up the hose for you. And let it drain. Yummy. And like I said, I'm on top of a drain. It separates it out. It's not going anywhere. I'm going to clean it up with a hose after I'm done. Alright, next thing that I think we have to do, but we may not, yeah, we probably will, is... I'll put a picture in it for here so you can look at the carnage of the wheel, the compressor wheel. Dude totally blew his entire compressor housing off the center housing. It It is absolute carnage. As a matter of fact, you know what? We'll, we'll just go see it now. Because it is fucking... It is ridiculous. 309,000 miles was on this turbo. Look at that. Look at that. That's the wheel. Oh, 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 uh, that's, uh, not supposed to happen. <laughs> oh my god. Snap the shaft right out of it. Fantastic. Smoked like a motherfucker. <laughs> it was great. It was awesome. I'll have to bleep that out. Because you can't swear on YouTube. You don't want to get. You don't want to get demonetized, even though I'm not monetized anyway. Anyway, all right, next thing is we are actually going to, since I didn't disconnect my battery, I'm going to disconnect my battery because the next thing we have to do is pull the, uh, pull the fuel line. on a stock high pressure fuel pump so if anyone wants to donate one go right ahead pull up on that uh, my middle name is danger so all right uh, next thing is oh some extra Give extra, get extra. Like the commercials say. And press and pull. And I guess we'll put that up so that it doesn't leak. And so now I smell like gas. I smell like 30. Sorry for whispering to mm -hmm. just the light to talk. Sorry, I pressed the power button. Didn't mean to stop it there. Let me get your... Take your extension off. Get your short boy. Short boy there. There's my charger that I was plugged into. So you're gonna disconnect. That and Bolton right there. Oh. Don't drop it. Put, put that somewhere safe. All right, and then this fuel line will come right out. There's still gas in it, so careful. Again, it separates. Keep that somewhere safe. Alright, uh, we are just about ready to pull the manifold. So, let me uh, go get a longer extension and I'll be right back. Alright, longer extension required. Required. We're plugged back in. And we're going to start taking out... Just leave them in the hole. 
you can. Oh, you're gonna strip the balls. Oh, no. Whoa. Stay in there. There we go. Another one. They can come out in any order. They just gotta go in in the right order. Actually, just kidding. Take the long two for the thing, for the crossover two, whatever you want to call it. Take those two out last. Because those are the ones that hold water. Live action, folks, as Cletus would say. You're seeing it basically as it happens. Come on, come on. There we go. It's kind of hot, though. Upstate New York hot. beans with the snap-on ratcheting wrench, ratcheter, power ratchet. Check. That's the numero 10. Alright, then we're going to do a thermostat housing. Okay, here's the last one. And kind of here, it's actually in here that it's loose. Alright, now that we've got all the bolts completely loose, then we'll go pull them off. Ooh, it's hot. Real friend that's driving us around all day. Ideally, you'd want some sort of magnetic tray for these, but uh, I, like I said, my middle name is Danger. Uh, let me go get a magnet. Magnet acquired. Zip. Zip. You know what? Just turn your high pressure fuel pump thing around. Zip. Use that as a little cup. I'm sorry about the lighting as well. This is after work. Again. This is the only time I get to do this stuff. Alright, so. Yeah, see? Completely out. Alright, so the next thing that we are going to do is we're going to kind of... We're going to release this wiring harness from here and from there. We're going to kind of give it some, some slacky boy. Then, oh, let me think about this for a minute. All right, so I lied. We are going to take these heater hoses off because you do not have enough clearance to get them. 
So first of all, I want to say a special screw you to those clamps because they're always, even if you put them on in the right place, they're always in the wrong place. So I don't know if I'm going to use them anymore. I may switch to some worm drives while I'm in here. So just zip these, zip those right off. And now, oh my god, the shadow. Now, I'm just gonna pull the intake manifold and kind of, oh god, no. Oh, I forgot the turbo lines. Oh, those are even worse. Okay. I'm gonna have a zen moment. Hold on. There it is. It's out. Now, don't drop that in your cylinder. Okay. So, as you can see, it's a little oily. Sometimes, when you've got a cylinder with low compression, and, uh, you know, it's not, not the best in the world. Make sure there's nothing in the cylinders. Let's see if I can turn the light on for you guys. That's not too bad. Not too terrible. Oh boy. We got a little metal shaving in there. <laughs> That'll be alright. Let me get that out of there real quick. Some long needle nose. Just make sure. And this is after a while running meth, too, so, you know, it's not like meth cleans it out immediately. So, alright, let me get that metal shaving out. to Steve again for making some quality product there. Everything lines up super nice. Alright, now we're going to be taking the back on. 
the same way it came off. And we're going to make sure you drop your phone charger so that uh, you know, your phone dies while you're doing this. Ah, hot, 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 hot. I'm gonna do this part with two hands. All you gotta do, line it up, put put a bolt in this this corner right here, this one, and this one, and that'll line it up nice. And I'll come back when I do that because I need two hands for that. Okay, shadow time again. All right, once you got all your bolts in, I've got all the bolts in. You're gonna get your five millimeter. Roni. and uh, you're going to start tightening from the middle. So I'm going to go get my hex socket because I'm ill prepared. Let's see if I can find it in this messy ass toolbox. There's the 11 right there. Uh, I'm going to pause it because nobody likes a messy toolbox. make contact you're not torquing them with your hand but I'll be back once they're all tightened because I need both hands all right so now you're gonna start with this one because this is the center on this side and you're gonna give it choke up on the ratchet like a lot and you're basically gonna give it the baby That's it. Basically till it stops. And then we're gonna go with that one, which is between uh, two and three. And again, choke on the ratchet. Baby hands are hurt. Don't need a lot, because these are rubber gaskets and they will seal. Okay, and now you're gonna go to the one switch and you're going to go to the one to the battery side of three so that's that was this was four and five baby hands effort okay then you're going to go across to the side of six baby hands effort e then you're going to go to the one right next to one. And that one's gonna move loosened up. But again, baby hands up. And then you're gonna go to this one over here. Um, hold on again, sorry for the camera. It's just me, baby hands up. And then you're gonna go to this one. Uh, and then finally, 
to this one. So you do those ten in that order. Or you can reverse that for whatever. As long as you go from inside out. Then the last two that you do are these ones. Baby hands effort. in there. Perfect fit. Looks awesome. Now it's time to start putting everything back together. And you already saw me take it apart. So basically just do the opposite. These demon hoses back here with, uh, where are they? These demon clamps. Do yourself a favor. Just replace them with regular regular old zippity doo dah clamps, wherever they are, wherever I put that one. Clamps like this, because then you can just put a socket on them, or with a screwdriver, and then you don't have to mess with them. You don't have to get in there with stupid tools to get them. And you can put the clamps on, open the clamp, or put the hoses on, open the clamps all the way up, etc, etc. So... I am going to uh, do all that, put everything back, and get a drink, because I'm hot from the sun blasting in on my back, even with the fan, it ain't enough. So hook up all your lines, put your fuel back together. be back okay so we're all back together all tightened up don't have coolant in it yet everything else is done tight 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 noise makers back on but obviously battery's not connected but as you probably can see we get a whole bunch of coolant in there we don't want that to just hang out. Oh, oh, much better than those safety, safety clamps. So, we're all back together. So, we're gonna take our hose. Oh, the hose leaks. But we knew that. So, you're going to take your hose, and you're going to move your electric tools out of the way, <laughs> so they don't get sprayed on, and you're going to spray it down. And this is why you left the battery disconnected, because you're going to be spraying your starter and stuff, and you're basically spraying enough wash the coolant out. And just let it go. Make it rain. And even though it's meant to do this, you know, you're meant to be able to dry through the rain. This is a lot of directed water. So, I just want to be careful. Rinse it out. Nice and good. Try not to spray your alternator, which is right there. Just once that starts turning, you'll get a heap and heck of a squeal. That should be good, though. Man, we need a new Lowe's. Here at the shop. We just got all that replaced. 
except for the hooks. All right, now you can either blow it off or just kind of let it dry. I'm just going to let it dry. Well, uh, well, I put some coolant in it. So, I'm going to go uh, get some coolant. Make sure you don't have any bonus bolts. Because bonus bolts aren't. Besides, you know, the 12 that came with the kit. Alright, I'm going to fill it up with coolant. And then I'll be back. gold because like I said for the third time my middle name is danger now you get to see the glare that I've been working in <sighs> cycle the key a couple times because you did drain the fuel system and let's see if it starts it starts. Why wouldn't it start? You did do it right? 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 Yeah, I know I need gas. Alright. Let's go back out. Oh my god, listen to that cold start, bro. in the car and uh, uh, so drive it around for a while drive it around turn the heat on if you can bear it even if you can't bear it bear it because you got to get that heater core Ford Ford says to drain the coolant or bleed the coolant, you want to uh, rev it to 3,000 for three minutes and then let it come to an idle for 30 seconds and then shut it off for I think like a minute or two minutes or something and repeat that kind of over and over and over until you have heated idle. And once you have heated idle, you know that uh, the coolant's let out. Idols come down, you know there's no leaks. I'm gonna go get myself a frosty cool beverage. Do some uh, after data logs here shortly. Make sure you don't have any fuel leaks. I didn't do that. No fuel leaks. Because those are the bad ones. Coolant leaks you can deal with, fuel leaks you can. Not in New York State at least. So, yeah, um, yeah, so if you like this, if you want one of these, email Steve, x35, orders at x35designs.com, um, oh man, my girlfriend's calling. Email him, like, share, subscribe, please, because I need subscribers.